device. I gotta make sure I don't cut my head off. I'm using my iPhone for better quality. But uh, as you can tell in the title, finally got my wheel in. I am so excited. There's a few things I hated about the 8Y and uh, one being the diffuser, we took care of that. Shout out to It's Not Stock for sourcing the Rieger diffuser. And this goes, uh, shout out to Anthony Smith. He runs Apollo Auto Works. I'll link that down below. Um, yeah, we got a new wheel. So uh, the stock wheel came with, I mean, it's just a full circle. You guys will see here in a second when we take it out of the car. It's just ugly. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it looks. So we had to make custom ones. And I'm not a big carbon fiber guy at all. So of course I didn't get carbon. Oh boy. I also got a, uh, like my last wheel, I just got a wheel. This one, I actually got a matching airbag to go with it. Oh, which is the airbag cover. So <laughs> got the airbag cover here. It's really nice. Got the white stitch with the black uh, emblems. Mine are silver on the car right now. So this is really nice. And this is like, like leather, leatherette. The other one's just like hard plastic. So there's, there's that. And then we got the wheel itself. Nice wrap. This is actually really nice packaging too. Um, yeah, let's take this out. Oh yeah, that is gorgeous. You guys are actually seeing the front of it before I am. Dang. All right. Yeah. So this is just like my Mark seven wheel. I did the same pretty much design, but instead of blue, I did white perforated leather thicker with the line. Only thing I don't like is this down here. I'm gonna figure out how I can pop that out and paint it. I'm gonna use my other wheel as a test dummy, and then we'll we'll figure that out to make that match. But yeah, it looks basically the same as my old wheel. We just have to transfer the stuff over, uh, pop the airbag out. It looks all simple. You see, you got these tabs back here. Um, this is what these guys hold the uh, airbag in. So we'll go in behind this with a pick, pop this side, pop this side, get the wheel out. It's already got a line here. You guys can kind of see in the middle here. It's got a line in here. It shows you exactly where center is. And uh, I don't know how it's gonna be getting the paddles on. I've never dealt with that before. Hopefully fitment's good. We're about to find out. I was really hoping BFI would have their paddles out by now, but they don't. So the wheel's gonna be coming back off in the future to um, put new paddles on, but let's get to it. lady just ran to the store so i got the little one here attached to me we're gonna get to work in today aren't we sweetie yeah we are all right so let's go out to the car get the old wheel out and uh get in here and start swapping some buttons and paddles and airbags so it's kind of difficult so right in here you want to get your pick in i just use like a normal pick here you got down in there it's gonna you gotta press super hard um, it might be better have a right angle pick or just a flat pick. I might try it with a different pick next, but see that little bar in there. You got to press down on that and then like kind of grab this. And now this side is kind of popped out. Now I have to turn the steering wheel and do it again to the other side. All right. Now that the steering wheel is loose, they should just kind of fall right off. And we'll have to go behind here. We'll disconnect this. I see you got the black connector down there. And then this yellow one and then we should be clear to pull it out looks like those are the only two and guys this connector here which is the one sitting here you have to push that little silver piece down right above my fingernail that pushes down and then this pulls out it's definitely an odd connector it took me a minute to figure it out but you gotta push down on that and then this piece pulls out Here's what I was talking about. You're pushing down on that and it flips into this. Next up, we'll grab the proper socket for this and we'll just pull the whole wheel off. It's that easy. And we gotta figure out how to get the cover off this airbag, which mm, looks like we're gonna have some fun doing that. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a project in itself. All right, we got an M12 Torx. Slide that bad boy on in. She's good to go. You can see it has uh, 
a little line in there. They're both marked up so you know where it's straight. So taking a look here at the cover, it looks like it's just clips that get held in here. So I'm gonna have to go up under this here and kind of just like pop the clips. I'm not gonna be able to up front. So I want to do all the sides and then hope the front will kind of just like pop out on its own the way it seems. It'd be interesting. So after further inspection, you can see all the clips for that's these are for the cover they're held in place by this plastic piece which is held in place by this metal piece which is held down by these t45 so we're gonna have to take the wiring harness off real quick which is all simple stuff you got some safety clips pop these out pop those out disconnect this one and this one power and ground and then we'll take out these t45s and there's springs under this so that's gonna be a uh, definitely a fun that's like how your horn works or not, doesn't seem very too much tension, like not anything that we can't handle. So we'll get this off piece by piece, and then we'll be able to get those retainers off, and then hopefully we can just probably just push these by hand, these little clips, and just pop this cover off. It's a lot of effort, but this looks a thousand times better than, than this, for sure. All right, guys, first things first, get the pickup under there. Just pop these up, boom. This one too, boom. And these should just come right out. Boom, there's one. Wanna make sure you put these back, obviously, in the, their proper spots. There we go. You got those two out. Get this guy out of here. This one. This one, boom, boom, next up, looks like a little power, boom, that one's probably ground, lift this out of there, yeah, we're almost there, you're a little girl in the background, this looks complicated, I don't know how in the heck that's supposed to come out, we're going to have to play around with that, we might not even have to take that out. Oh, it looks like there's another one right here. Put that back. Right there's one too. But this, that does not look like fun. I don't know what's going on there. Interesting. There was literally nothing special to it. It just pulls right off. It just got like some pressure clips inside of there and it slides down onto this little, uh, little guy right there this right here it just slides right onto it I'm like playing with it I'm like oh it moves and then just whoop pops right off all right guys all four screws are out um, as you're taking them out I just kept pressure on this because the pressure on these it makes them harder kind of harder to twist out but um, since I was holding it down when I took the last one out there's no there's no tension so we'll just lift this up set it to the side and hopefully these next couple of steps here oh, okay i think this, this is like the clock spring or something i don't know but it's heavy and it looks expensive so we are going to try to not mess with that too much next should just be this plastic guy it looks like it's going to come right up except for right here there's some stuff around this so we'll be mindful of that it looks like it's there to help keep this thing in place so we'll kind of just lift this whole thing oh okay so this whole thing just kind of comes up together mommy's home all right i'll get back to you guys all right guys i did not realize we'd be breaking this thing down all the way to the airbag itself like we're literally going to be touching the bag so once those clips are out the next thing is that it just the airbag pulls out. I started pulling it out a little bit and I was like, holy crap. Um, I didn't realize I'd be doing that. So I'm guessing this heavy piece here that I don't even want to touch. That's probably like the explosive part. I don't know why I said clock spring. That's probably, I think that's like in the wheel. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty dense. So, but yeah, I uh, kind of just like pushed on the clips around the outside little by little. Sorry guys, that clip kind of cut off, um, ran out of storage. So. 
like I said, you get all the clips out. I just did them little by little. If you do one side too much, it sits uneven and you're not gonna get it out. I had to push one side back down to get this, this harder front side out. But uh, I guess we'll just do this together. Oh, she is just talking away. We'll just be gentle as can be here. Oh God, I do not like this. I would not recommend. Okay, it looks like it's at least keeping its shape. I do want to get a picture of this, so we're at the pause, but uh, you can see what the bag looks like. Interesting. Okay, so in case you guys run into this issue, this right here, it won't sit flush because it's hitting this plastic, which is part of the cover. So I go back, look in the video, make sure I'm not going crazy. Look at this side of the cover. This cover is cut down, it's clearanced for that. So I'm about to pop all this stuff back out, which is, I mean, kind of crappy, but... And then I mark this, so we'll just cut that little section out so this can sit flush. Okay, so you guys see where I marked this here? That's where I'm gonna have to cut it. You compare it to this one, this one doesn't have that. All right, so it's cut out. Very simple to do. This stuff is like super duper soft. Like it's almost, it almost feels like a little bit harder than a stick of chewing gum. The Razor blade, fresh blade, cuts right through it and just kind of marked down, down and just slid it right across. Now we should actually be able to put the airbag in. So this might not be for everybody, especially, you know, this is definitely uh, a whole task in itself, but there we go. We can put this thing back together and then actually start on the wheel itself. Not gonna lie guys, I am super proud of myself. It fit just right. Um, so once you get all the clips on, you want to make sure this retaining ring stays up. I'm sorry, I didn't record putting it on. Um, you want to make sure the retaining ring stays up while you're getting all these through. You just kind of want to go around in a circle little by little, just pushing it down. I use uh, this piece a lot. Like I was prying in here. I'd like stick this in here and like press on these to get it off. And then I was using this to like press it down, especially back here. You kind of got these slots you can go through and press it down. And then once all the clips are out, this retaining guy slips behind the clips to make sure they don't pop out. So that's why you wanna make sure this is up while you're pushing the clips through. Otherwise, this will prevent those from, from getting to where they need to be. So far, so good. Impressed with myself, I'm happy, I feel accomplished. And uh, I'll just kinda toss all the rest of this together real quick. See how she looks. All right, your little explosive doohickey just drops right in. You got so many different pins to guide you to do so. The sky only goes on one way. Oh, got my magnet stuck to it. I'll get these, I'll get the springs sitting over top of your spots. Everything looks good. And then we'll just kind of hold it down as we get our screws back in and then our wiring harness and she's done. I'm sorry, I don't have a torque spec for you guys on these, but what we're looking at here, see these spring, this is how your horn works. So if you look right there, that little nipple in the middle of the screen, this comes down and touches that. And there's one right there as well. When this comes down, that's what activates your horn. You're getting power there and it goes to this. So you're getting, it's, get, you know, completing that circuit, I guess. And that's what's making your horn go off. So you can kind of adjust these, I guess, however, like, hard you want. I kind of, like, went around and made sure they all seem about the same height. That they're moving down and that the resistance feels a way that I like. But First things first, we got these two itty-bitty T10s. I have this nice little kit here. There's two screws right there and right there. Now hopefully this like retainer thing will pop out. I don't really know what I'm doing guys, so bear with me. All right. After you get the screws out, it's just held in by these pressure pins. See, we got four pins and there's these spots in each corner. This, these bottom ones, I'm able to, you're able to like kind of get your fingers in and grip. These ones at the top, I use the L portion of this, got under it and brought them up. They're in there tight, so be very, very careful. Next up here, just starting to pull wires up. These tuck in up there. There's a grounding screw right here, same size, T10. 
Only thing is, on this one, it doesn't have the provisions for where these wires go. If you look down in here, it definitely looks different, and there's not those screw holes, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Shall be interesting. Kind of skipping ahead here. So the buttons themselves, there's no screws or anything. They sit in there. See, it's like these pressure clips again. You got these two pins, they go in here and here. Just kind of get your two fingers up in there and bring them back and forth. A little flathead or like a little trim tool might help bring it up a little bit at first. That way you can get your fingers up under there and just and then they just pop out. Once they pop out, they're still connected on the back side here. This is this little itty bitty clip, super easy. Pull this off, disconnect that, and then it's just one T, what are we looking at? Like a T20. T20, yep, T20, and then the paddle comes out. The paddle has like a hook on it. You can see the hook right there. So the paddle kind of like, you gotta like swing it in and swing it out. Fits on here, just, just fine. I suck at the second half of this video. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting carried away here. Um, when you're putting these in, the two pins that hold it in, you put those in first, and then you just push this back. There's a little clip here. It's not even a clip. It's just like a little notch that holds this corner in. You'll put those two in first and then this. If you try and put that in first, it's not going to line up with these. So I, I fought with that for a while, and I finally got them on, and I realized, I was like, shit, I really don't want to take them back off because it's a pain in the butt. And trust me, get down in here where the pins go, and then just lift from there, and it'll pop right out, and everything from there is so simple. And this will go back in here to the airbag. This goes to this box which we're trying to figure out what this box does because this steering wheel doesn't have a provision for this as mine does. Mine, the box slides in and you get this wire that goes into the wheel, which I can't figure out what it does. Maybe one of you guys can figure it out. I'm about to just try it without it, see what it does. I'm not sure. All right, wheel is pretty much all back together. We are not gonna deal with that box. I'm actually gonna leave it uninstalled and I'm gonna go hook this up to the car and see if anything doesn't work or throws codes, then I'll know what this box is for and what that wire is for is in the wheel. Nothing comes up on Google. I search for every part number on here, everything. I can't figure anything out. So I figured why not trial and error, go throw it on the car, see what happens. And if it's fine, then whatever. I won't even worry about it. Like, cause. This is just, I mean, it does say Q3 on that tag. It says Audi Q3. So it could just be a, well, I mean, it definitely it's just a part spin wheel. And that could be for like a heating element that I don't even have. Like they just leave it in there and just toss the wheel on the car because it works. So um, we're going to go throw it on and see what happens. All right, boys, we are back in. I just went for a little test drive. This thing is beautiful. It feels so much better. I can get out of the car better. I just need to wipe my fingerprints off and stuff. So all the buttons work, everything works except for the steering portion. When you go into um, cruise control, you can have it so the car actually steers for you. Like you go up to a curve and it'll legit steer and it'll whistle and beep at you if you're not, your hands out on the wheel after like five seconds or something. Now also I didn't plug the box in. I have to clearance that spot out in the steering wheel to do that, which I don't mind doing. I'm waiting for him to tell me what he wants me to do. Um, I'm thinking I'll just cut the wire that goes into the wheel on the other one, twist it together, or maybe see if it needs a resistor and put the box in and everything, and maybe it'll just work. Or maybe I'm just really dumb and this idea is really stupid. <laughs> but I really don't want to take this wheel back out and send it back. I've been waiting for a while for it, and I love it. Just the way it feels, the way it looks. I can get in and out of the car a little bit easier. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'll just let you guys know what I'm going to do. It is Thursday night. I'm starving. We're about to eat. I want to see what he says. Well, boys, as we sit here in traffic to try and get through the tunnel, figured I'd show you guys the wheel a little bit more. It looks great in here. I'm loving it. I can get out of the car easier. I can, uh, I like it. It gives me more confidence driving. Here's this. It's really cool. The car, I'm not even like touching the brake and it'll slow down for me and, and go down to a stop. And then all you gotta do is touch the cruise control 
cruise control stock, then it'll go back up again. It's great for stop and go traffic. But back on the topic of um, the electronics in the wheel, that definitely was for the auto steering. Normally the car, like you, once you set cruise control, you can hit this button here, boom, and the car will legitimately steer for you and it senses your hand on the wheel and all that. That's not working. So what they're gonna do is order me the right wheel, fix it up like this one, and then send it, and then I'll send this one back eventually, and uh, then I'll have that back. I do use it, um, but not that much. I probably shouldn't, because it isn't safe. You can legit just put your hand on the wheel and fall asleep, and the car will drive for you. Um, but it is nice to have, and they, they didn't know. It's not their fault. This car is so new, um, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but I love this wheel. I love this cover. Uh, I just can't I can't wait to go race with it. It feels it's so much more comfortable just driving like it's great The only thing I, I need now is some nice paddles to go along with this and I'll be set I think we'll call the video there. Let me know what you guys think. Sorry again I didn't go into super detail for the wheel buttons here, but they're just like the trim and stuff They have these little pins in there. You got to pull out and uh it's just super simple. You get the, the T whatever 20 back there for the paddle, and you just swap it right over. It's super duper simple. I'll probably do an, an update. I'll show you guys that specifically in another video when the new wheel comes, I guess. I'll do like a quick one minute video. You know how people like those short videos these days, so we'll, we'll do that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll drop the link for uh, Apollo Auto Works, who I got this through, and the guy himself down in the description if you guys want some this truck up there says i suck toes what the hell is wrong with people anyway thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the flip flop